Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I go about painting long flowing black fur, especially the shiny kind. Alright, let's begin. So I begin by quickly mapping out where your fur pieces will go with light pencil strokes. For long fur, it helps to be loose and fluid with the strokes. I'm painting onto prime watercolor paper with oils, but this technique can be applied to other surfaces as well, and it can even be used with acrylics with a few adjustments. I masked off the edges with painter's tape, which helps to create a nice sharp edge as well as it secures the paper to the board. When starting a painting, I always tend to start by blocking in some shadows. It helps to determine where things will go. The biggest piece of advice I can give for painting realistic black fur is to avoid using black paint. Sounds counterintuitive, I know. Black paint is notoriously flat and lifeless, which is the last thing that you want when you're trying to add life to a painting. You want to hand mix all of your darkest tones. I highly recommend you give this a try. With a little practice, you should see some amazing results. So I mixed a very dark tone, primarily using burnt umber, violet, and a tiny dab of Prussian blue. Just a little bit though, that stuff is powerful. And then using a large brush, dilute the paint with some medium to increase the flow and block that in to the darkest areas. First I like to focus on the large shadowed areas, then work in some strokes to begin to form the actual hair. For mediums, I usually use odorless paint thinner. Um, or Liquin by Windsor, even though there's other brands that make a similar product. Because I'm working on white paper, which is not actually something I usually do, I went in with the medium tone next to build up that highlighted area. As I block in those rough areas, I grab a dry brush, usually a soft angled brush, and blend the paint together, always stroking in the direction that the hair flows. This helps to create a nice, soft, solid base to build upon. So the next few steps are going to bounce between highlights and shadows. Again for the shadows, I'm using that dark mixture from before, mostly burnt umber, Prussian blue, and violet, thinned with medium to get the desired consistency. For the highlighted areas, I'm using titanium white with a small dab of Prussian blue and a burnt umber. At this point, I avoid using pure white for the same reason that I avoid using pure black. It's flat, it's lifeless, unless it's used properly. Whereas I rarely use black in paintings anymore, really the only time that I do use it is when I'm actually painting a grayscale image, it's pretty difficult to avoid white altogether. So I like to work around this by mixing it with other paint until the very last detailing step. That's usually when I go in with pure white. Throughout most of the painting, save for the final detailing step, I'm using a range of round brushes. I like these for long fur because they can create these lovely flowing soft lines when the paint is thin properly, yet you can also lay down solid blocks of paint too. In between each step, I'm blending again with that dry angled brush. I find that by blending the paint in the direction of the fur, it aids in creating a much more realistic fur pattern. The blending can create darker and lighter patches that are pretty organic, and they serve as a great base for detailing later on. If your brush starts to create some variation in the fur, lean into it. Realistic fur is a little chaotic, and variation can actually be a huge helping hand if you're aiming for realism. One thing I'm careful to do during these phases is to define the fur chunks that are beginning to form. Fur is not uniform and perfect, so make sure that your painted fur shows variation. Working back and forth, bouncing between highlights and shadows, gradually using smaller and smaller, smaller, and smaller brushes to add more detail.
So earlier I talked about not using black because it tends to make the painting very flat. Well, despite not using black here, this fur is actually still looking pretty flat and not very realistic. So now it's time for one of my favorite steps to any painting, glazing. Glazing is a technique in which you use a small bit of paint and add it to a medium, I use liquid, and mix it until it's homogenous and then apply it to your painting. This creates gentle washes of color that can build up to increase intensity. I use this anytime that I want to add some color variation or deepen shadows or even add some glow. Here I'm mixing a tiny bit of Prussian blue with liquid and then add that dark blue wash to most of the painting. First making sure that the lower layers are completely dry and then focusing mostly on the shadows but also letting a little bit of that blue venture into the lighter areas. Black fur reflects the environment, so if you have a strong colored light source in your painting, you may need to actually use a different color other than blue. I like to save my final detailing phase for after the glaze layers. Taking my finest brushes, usually a rigger or a liner brush for long flowing fur, it makes up a dark tone and a light tone that's the medium. I'm usually going for the extremes at this point, so I'm using my darkest darks and then I'm using my brightest brights. So now I'm using actually pure white for the highlight since we're in that final detailing phase and only the very brightest of areas are going to be receiving that pure white paint. The consistency of the paint is key at this point. I find it helpful to thin it with paint thinner in order to keep those bristles flowing nicely over the surface. Practice on a spare piece of paper. Roll your paintbrushes in the thin paint, being careful to roll those bristles to a point, or by flattening the bristles so they create a nice sharp edge. Now with a loose wrist, carefully maneuver your brush so that you can create those nice flowing lines. The bristles should glide gently over the surface. If your lines are jagged and thick, Try thinning your paint more with odorless thinner and using a brush that is in better shape. Using those nice controlled strokes, work in those final defined shadowed strokes and the brightest highlighted hairs. And we're done! Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions as well, feel free to ask. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.